All right, so I'm, I haven't recorded in a while, so I might as well. So this is my GPU. This is a um, Aorus Master 6800 XT. Very nice card. I really like it. But I was having some temp issues, and you can see the thermal paste spread seems to have like shrunk down to this section here. And there's not a lot of contact up over here. And if you see on the die, see the pressure is very uneven there. So I'm not really sure how that happened, but I have a few ideas. But I gotta, I'm gonna put, the plan is, is to replace the thermal paste here, obviously. But I'm gonna be replacing it with uh, liquid metal. So liquid metal with copper, it'll stain the copper, but it won't uh, react badly. Like, a, I think aluminum uh, will react badly, but... So this, the copper will be fine with liquid metal. The thing I need to watch out for is all these capacitors along here. I don't want those to short out, so I'm gonna have to wipe all this thermal paste off and make sure it's decently clean so then I can cover uh, the capacitors with some nail polish. And then um, I was thinking of covering down here, but this like, like there's like a little bit of like a brace around here, like this uh, silver metal piece around the die. So I'm kind of thinking that the thermal paste won't move out of that area or I mean the liquid metal, I mean. So, um, yeah, I'm thinking that I'll just replace the, or just do uh, nail polish in the inside here. It should be okay. Um, but I think this empty spot here is because I mount my GPU vertically. And if you move it down like this, this is the way it would be sitting. The top is empty. So I'm wondering if like over time the thermal paste shifted down a little bit from the vertical mount. Um, I'm not really sure how that's going to work with liquid metal. And I'm also thinking that's an issue with the mounting pressure that I had on here. And that could be a result of the fact that the screws I had, these uh, little like spring screws, I think those... One of them was a little bit stripped, so I couldn't get it as tight as I wanted it to. So maybe it was like this one, where the corner is like especially empty there. And it there wasn't enough pressure on the top two here to like, uh, what's it called? Like, um, surface tension the thermal paste, I guess. And especially when it gets hot, it might like liquefy a little. So we'll see, um, we'll see if I can figure that out. I do actually have replacement screws for those. So I'll put some new screws on instead, and uh, we'll see if the uh, liquid metal helps out. Uh, I probably won't know how bad it will get until way later, but we'll just have to see what happens for now. Alright, so the way I did this, I just cleaned that part off with some blue towel and uh, rubbing alcohol, strongest I can buy at Walmart. And then... Uh, for this, so as you can see there's still some thermal paste left, but I got rid of all the chunks. And the way I did that is I used these Q-tips. Now these are like, uh, they don't have any threads, it's like a, uh, I don't know, it's like some kind of silicone sponge type thing. And these are good for cleaning like lens and stuff. I, you probably can look up like lens, silicon, Q-tip, whatever. And that'll come up, and that's good because the threads will hook around the capacitors and stuff when you're cleaning with a regular Q-tip, and those won't do that, so uh, the threads will, like, chip them off if they get caught, whereas these don't have any threads, so you can kind of, like, brush it over and it won't get caught on anything. But even then, I would say you got to be really careful anyways because they will, like, catch a little bit, so you really got to brush it over real careful, and I use a lot of alcohol, like, I, I douse it in alcohol and it kind of breaks down the thermal paste as you're brushing it over and you kind of brush it over and over and over again like very gently and eventually it kind of just breaks down and uh, not not like too much is left so yeah uh, that's that's how I did that but I would not I honestly I wouldn't recommend anyone do that because it's so easy to break those off but if you're gonna do it that's how I uh, how I did it all right, so I put a second layer, like a very thin layer of nail polish 
on this side right here because I saw some thermal paste was sticking out a little bit from the nail polish kind of like mixed in so I didn't want it to interfere with the bonding to the, the PCB here so I just added a second layer to make sure that it was completely covered and then I added a piece of captain tape just in case if it leaked over that and into these uh, memory chips. Okay, so I went ahead and applied the liquid metal. So it looks pretty thick in the camera, but when I put it on, I put a very small dot on I made sure to spread it out real good. And like I really did not put that much on and I used the excess on this side. So I, I think I got that pretty good, but we'll see if I did anything wrong. I don't see any like big blobs or anything. It's pretty well spread out. So yeah, we'll see if that worked. But uh, basically I put like a dot in the middle and I spread it out a little bit on this first. And then I spread it on this side a little bit and I, it seemed like it, there were a few dry spots. Uh, like to the top left when I was spreading it out and I couldn't really get it any more there without I mean it looked, still looked pretty dry so I put like a little bit on this pad and like dabbed a little onto the q-tip that it came with and spread it up in the corner and around again and it seemed to come out pretty good let's see if I can focus in on that yeah that seems okay alright well let's see if that worked so I put the heatsink on and I realized that having the captain tape over the memory modules was kind of like a I don't think it will impact thermally too much but it might enough to the point where I would want it removed so I decided to remove it because uh, the I mean it wasn't leaking past any of the nail polish so I just decided you know might as well just not have the captain tape, so I decided to remove it. Thought I'd mention that. Hello. Uh, it's been about a, I don't know, I'd say two and a half weeks since I last recorded on this. Uh, I don't know why it keeps setting this profile. There we go. So that, uh, I, so I, Obviously, the the um, since it's been two and a half weeks and I'm still using the computer fine, the GPU hasn't exploded and it seems to have been going well. So my temperatures are pretty good. It uh, my formerly like with the thermal paste where it had like that uh like the bad application. Well, it wasn't a bad application because I applied it myself before. But what happened was is that for whatever reason on whatever mounting pressure I had the thermal paste like sunk down because of just like gravity I think and on that I was getting like 110 junction temperature which is way above what it, I should be getting on this card at least so or uh well with the heat sink on this card some cards I can see that maybe if you're overclocking at the same time but uh the heat sink on this card is so big, so I, I just don't understand why it would ever go up that high, that's why I got concerned. Anyway, uh, it's doing a lot better, uh, and I'll show that here. So, I kinda, like, this is just like some random overclock I set that actually worked. I So before, when I was overclocking with this card, I would have to be like really picky about setting like the frequency and like the VRAM and everything but I just like maxed everything out and it started working right away so I don't know if it was just like better cooling on the direct like directly to the die to the heatsink that made it so that it doesn't really care what frequency it's at anymore um, but I, I've been getting my best like uh, Port Royal scores with this card uh, since I put this uh, liquid metal on so I, I don't really know why like it was so picky before it could also have been like the driver software was uh like finicky or not like setting stuff correctly or whatever before um i also tried setting like the min frequency uh up like this to close to the max frequency what that uh from what i understand i think i saw bill zoid talk about this uh he said that when he 
turned his min frequency up, it got rid of like a, vol a, a lot of voltage dips for power saving. I think, he, I think he said it was some type of power saving. And I tried like setting this a little bit higher to see if that would help, but I don't think it helped. So, uh, or I, I don't think I got any higher scores from it at least. It didn't really make much of a difference, at least in the like uh, Port Royal scores. So I'll run this right now. And uh, this is just like some random overclock that I set. And I, I always get underneath, I, I don't know if my card's just like bad at overclocking or what, but I always get underneath like, uh, I don't know what is what is my max right now. It's probably gonna cancel the score. Oh, all right. Well, I'll, I'll let that run and just get back to that. All right. Here's my here's my uh, port poro scan or scan <laughs> score. This is generally what I get. So like nine five nine five. I think. So if we come here, my results, Port Royal. So my highest recently was 9775, which is definitely the highest score I've ever gotten, at least on this card. I'm getting 9595 right now. Um, and formerly, when I originally got this card, uh, I got 9366. So the average seems to be 9561. Um, and the highest I ever got, oh no, maybe th these are like recent. Should it, it should be at like, uh, yeah, 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 way back here. Oh no, my highest score was 9822. Not sure, I might have to like delete some of these and like sort through it. I never broke 10k though. So it was probably that 900, yeah, yeah. These, these 9,800. I may have gotten like 9,900 at some point. I think I remember something like that. But anyway, uh, I was not getting that high on just regular air like as it is now. So the fact that I'm already getting kind of close to that just on air normal is pretty good because on this, these a lot of these scores um, I was during the winter and I had the fans on max and I was blasting air through uh, the window. And that's how I was able to get those scores like a lot of my, so these are these are probably some of my stock scores. So six five eight five was probably stock. These are my overclocks, like all the ones in the nine thousands. Um, got six 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 in a score. That's funny. And so I think nine eight something was my highest. That's the biggest one I've seen so far. Nine eight two two. I thought there was another one. 9823. Yeah, 9823 seems to be the the highest score I got. And recently, the highest one I got was Yeah, it's up here. 968 or 9699 is my highest as of recently. So that's not that's pretty comparable and I that's just running stock settings on us well not stock settings but like stock fan curve and like room temperature so yeah not bad so I was a little bit worried because it's vertically mounted that the thermal paste or well liquid metal now the liquid metal would uh, sink down like the thermal paste did a little bit I don't think that's happening just because my temperatures are still pretty good and I think the surface tension with like silicon to metal contact is a bit better with that kind of stuff. I'm not really sure, it's just like an assumption, but we'll see in the coming months if that does happen. I was thinking about taking the card out one more last time just to see how it still looks after two and a half weeks, but I'll th I think I'll do that in a couple months and if I have something to report in, I will. But right now I don't think it's really worth it because I don't, it's kind of a pain to get it out of here and like take it apart 
and carefully like it's it's just kind of a pain to deal with and if it's working I don't really want to mess with it so I think it's good for now the thing is is that I actually I'm not super worried about it for another reason and that is I applied a very very small amount of liquid metal to the die and the copper plate and the reason that's like okay well I actually applied a little bit more than I showed in the video earlier because I don't think I showed this but in the video earlier I just showed like the the spread I had with or originally with the liquid metal and I put the card into the computer and I tested it and it didn't work like it was too little like I was getting bad temperatures and it was not running well so I took it out immediately and I put like a tiniest like drop more back on or onto the die and I spread that around and it was more like of a shiny blob than like a little bit of a film and that type blob it, it, it wasn't like like a huge amount that I added either so it only took like a very small amount for it to like uh, have like surface tension and kind of have like a curve to the the I don't know like the metal covering film I guess because it, it gives it a little bit of a curve when you look at it in the light uh, when you put a little bit more on so I, w I was like all right I'm hope I hope this isn't too much and I put it back together and I put it in and I got perfect temperatures so I'm thinking that I starting off with like too little and seeing it not working and then going back and putting a little bit more on was the right call because it prevented me from going too overboard and I like I could basically tune it to the the amount I needed for the car to make good contact so I I don't really know yeah, I don't I don't really know if I put the the right or right amount on, but I don't think I put enough on for it to like sink down or like lose tension or anything like that when it when it's in there. And I also did make sure that these screws on the back holding the back plate and the heat sink to the die was not torqued all the way tight because I had an assumption that uh, with liquid metal it might be a bit easy to squeeze it out and like have it drip out if you tighten it too much and you just want it enough so that there's surface tension and there's like pressure against it so that's making good contact but you don't want to tighten like all the way like super hard and I think that was the right call because I, I haven't noticed any issues so far so yeah that's just the that's the two and a half week report I guess um, I may like mess around with these these overclocks to see if I can get it a bit higher I just set it to 2600 and I lowered the VRM tuning a little bit but uh, Is this applied? Yeah Well, I'll, I'll run a few more tests I don't think I'll get any high high scores right now, but you know, we'll see. You sh I, I mean, I ever since I got this card, I, I like did a lot of benchmarks when I first got it, but I, usually I just want to play games when I have the time, so I don't really like think super hard about the overclocking stuff, unless I'm just messing around. But yeah, uh, let's, let's see how this test goes.